Hello guys, this is Mr. Myesis, and I'm coming to you straight from my classroom and we're going to talk about vector basics. So the basic ideas of vectors, <coughs> what they are, and some of the things that we need to do with them. So uh, the first thing I want to say is we're going to, well, what is a vector? A vector is a mathematical item um, that we represent in the coordinate plane here. We represent it with a ray, so it's represented by a ray, and we all know, kind of look, know what a ray looks like, right? That's a ray. If you don't remember geometry, that's what a ray looks like. So it's represented by a ray, and it has, this is very important, it has both, both magnitude and direction. Okay, this reminds me of, uh, if you've seen um, um, Despicable Me, there's that, <coughs> there's that scene when, um, when Vector... That's the, the villain vector gets gets introduced and he says um, with both magnet direction and magnitude because he does um, crimes with both direction and magnitude. So that is a vector. It has both magnitude and direction. Those of you that are my students know that my text alert is vector from Despicable Me going um, booyah. <coughs> we got a little cough here. Um, so anyway, in the coordinate plane. Um, this vector can be anywhere that we want it to be. Um, you know, if I drew a vector like this, all right, so I got this vector. This vector has both the magnitude, the length of it, and the direction, possibly the angle. And if I took that vector, you know, I can move this vector over here. Oh, I'd like to have moved the arrow with it, okay? And I move that, I can move that whole thing. You know, I can move the arrow there. It's the same vector. All right, I can move it. I can move this vector over here, right there, and it's the same vector. In fact, anywhere I move that vector, it's the same vector because it has the same magnitude and direction. Um, if I move this vector to start with its initial point, oops, come on, graph. This program, I'm telling you. Um, with the initial point, and I have to just mention here uh, very quickly, this point here, all right, the point, that's called the initial point. And <coughs> the arrow part is called the terminal point. And, you know, the initial point and terminal point, sometimes it's called um, um, tip and tail. This would be its tip and tail. Um, sometimes they call that in physics and stuff. But um, this is the terminal point. This is the initial point. It's kind of where it starts and where it ends. If the, <coughs> if the initial point is on the origin at 0, 0, okay, then this vector is said to be in standard position. All right, so if my vector starts at 0, 0, it's in standard position. Now, I can write a vector in... <coughs> In, that's in standard position in two ways. I can write it in what we call component form. And component form basically is where I have the components um, x2 minus x, which is the points. Okay, this is the, these are the points x2 minus x1, comma y2 minus y1. Okay, so I would subtract the points, and that would be component form. <coughs> or I can write it as a sum of unit vectors. Now what a unit vector is, a unit vector is a vector with a magnitude of 1. I cannot write on this thing today, guys. Sorry. So the magnitude is 1 unit. Um, in, in here, the unit vector going on the x-axis, this one here, all right, that we normally say is i. I'm going to use i hat. Um, that's what I use if I don't have bold on here, but usually we use bold in a book, is 1, 0. And the one going up in the y direction is j hat, and that is 0, 1. <coughs> so you see, uh, if I had three of these, I would equal to the y, court, y component, see how far it goes up in the y direction, and how far it goes in the x direction would be my i. <coughs> okay. So let's go and take a look at some examples of how we would use this, this information. 
Determine the vector in component form of the sum of the and the sum of unit vectors with initial point negative one five and terminal point one negative three. So what we're talking about is, um, you know, we have this point here, that would be our initial point, and then our terminal point one negative three is right here, and I have a vector that looks like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this vector and I'm going to move it into standard position right here. All right, and so that's what the vector I want to find now. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to use the formulas that I just used or I just gave you. All right, so we're going to do uh, component form is going to look like this: x2 minus x1, comma y2 minus y1. I'm going to call this vector u. So x2 is uh, one minus negative one. Ooh, what happened there? And y2 is negative 3 minus y1 is 5. And I got these from the initial point and the terminal point. you got to make sure you do it the right way, or otherwise you might have a vector going the other way. And that's not the direction we want, right? So the direction is important in vectors. So uh, 1 plus 1 is 2. And then we got negative 8. So that looks about right, right? 2 common negative 8s down there. Um, if we're going to write this as a sum of unit vectors, we're going to write it as 2i minus 8j. That's all you do. You just pop on an i right next to the 2 and a j right next to the thing, and then we get our two ways of writing it. All right? <coughs> Excuse my cough, guys. Um, all right, let's look at another one. And given vectors v, 2, negative 1, and u, negative 3, 4, determine each of the following vectors. So um, I have two vectors, and if I'm adding these two vectors... Um, 2, negative 1 in standard position looks like this. And uh, negative 3, 4 in standard position looks like this. And in order to add these, I'm going to use something called a parallelogram rule. And that basically means that I'm just going to do, I'm going to create a parallelogram the best I can with this kind of funky pen. Okay. So I create a parallelogram, and then I go from there to the end point to the corner, and this is my sum, u plus v. All right, so that's how we add two vectors geometrically. We use something called the parallelogram rule. <coughs> how do we add them algebraically? Well, folks, this is probably the easiest thing you can do. All you got to do is add the components together. That's right. So all you're doing is you're adding x the components x, x, and y, and y, 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 and x, 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 and then you're going to end up with what you have here. So watch this. So u plus v is negative 3, 4. That's u. And v is 2, negative 1. Guys, this is just simple. Add negative 3 and 2. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. 4 plus negative 1, 3. This is your, what we call, resultant vector. Does that look right? Negative 1, 1, 2, up 3. That's exactly what I got. <coughs> there we go. That's how we do the sum of vectors. It turns out that you can multiply a number to any vector. You can add two vectors. And it's just, it's pretty easy, easy algebra. So if I wanted 3u, what I'm trying to do is 3, I would have to clone you, right? Clone you three times. Ha <laughs> very funny. Very funny, my assist. Um, we would do 3 times u. And we just distribute that in there, and we get negative 9, comma, 12. And basically what this means is I'm making u larger by 3. So I'm taking u. It just sounds funny when I keep saying that I'm making u larger by 3. Because, um, you know, why would you want to be larger by 3? Um, that would be a very big person. So it's basically saying I'm extending this out. 1, 2, 3, right? Yeah, I got three of these vectors, and that's where <coughs> we're going to end up being. Oh, that's V, by the way. I drew the wrong one. That's V. You would be out here. One, two, three. And that makes kind of sense. Negative 9, 12 is kind of way up here, right? Okay, um, moving on. 2U plus 3V. So 2U plus 3V. Negative 6, comma, 8 plus 6, comma, negative 3. And then we add them together, and we get 0, comma, 5. Bam. Done, guys. Easy, right? 
All right, so these algebraic things with vectors are pretty simple. All right, last thing is this um, strange thing called a unit vector. And <coughs> basically it says, determine the unit vector in the same direction. So check this out. If I had four, two, and I have the vector that goes to that, right? Four, two, that's the components. What I'm trying to find is the unit vector. So this vector here, let me draw it with a different color, right here, that's in the same direction but one unit long. So all I'm doing is taking this entire magnitude and <coughs> or I'm taking <coughs> excuse me, I'm taking this entire vector and dividing it by its magnitude to get the units. So this is the formula, okay? It's u um, what am I doing there? u divided by the magnitude of u. By the way, this is how we denote magnitude, all right? So um, another way to write it is 1 over the magnitude of u times the components. So we're going to go 4 comma 2. So we've got to find the magnitude of u. The magnitude of u, I didn't mention, but the magnitude of u can be found by using the square root of x squared plus y squared when they're in component form. Why can I do that? Because look, it's just a right triangle. So I'm just using, this is the magnitude here. <coughs> I'm just using Pythagorean theorem, guys. This is just Pythagorean theorem. All right, so I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to get the square root of 4 squared plus 2 squared times 4 over 4 comma 2. That's going to give me the square root of 20, which I can simplify to 1 over 2 root 5. And I'm going to multiply it into this vector and get 4 over 2 root 5 and 2 over 2 root 5. Simplify that to 2 over root 5 and 1 over root 5. Now if you really want to be technical and you don't want to have these um, square roots here, you can um, multiply both top and bottom by the square root of 5. You'll get 2 root 5 over 5 and root 5 over 5. And this is like, this is really your answer. Alright, so that's it. That is uh, the vector basics, and we will see you next time. Bye.